By the time Capo and the Rev had returned to Avonlea, Anne Shirley had become Anne of Green Gables. She had settled into her new home and her hair had turned a handsome auburn. She was splendidly happy and nothing could possibly go wrong. Marilla had given up her frigid ways and had fully adopted Anne and had given way to her calling her Auntie Cordelia. It was then that a rap came across Anne's knuckles and Marilla shouted, Anne Shirley, it is time to announce Chapter 9. Mrs. Rachel Lynde is properly horrified, said Auntie Cordelia. Enough! shouted Marilla as the actual chapter began. Anne had been a fortnight at Green Gables before Mrs. Lynn arrived to inspect her. Mrs. Rachel, to do her justice, was not to blame for this. A severe and unseasonable attack of grip had confined that good lady to her house after she'd eaten a late-night bowl of oxtail stew. Mrs. Rachel was not often sick and had a well-defined contempt for people who were. But grip, she asserted, was like no other illness on earth and could only be interpreted as one of the special visitations of Providence. The Lord seemed fond of striking Rachel ill from time to time and seemed to enjoy the cacophonous din that came from her bedchambers as Thomas Lynn snored. Rachel, dare, Thomas Lynn dared to assert. Please leave the Cuthwoods be. You're still ill and likely to spread those sea serpents from your belly to theirs. Rachel Lynn had been pacing the halls of the Lynn home for weeks now and had driven Thomas nearly out of doors. But he still felt a pang of guilt unleashing Rachel upon the Cuthbert's new orphan. Thomas had already met and conversed with Anne on several occasions and could only imagine the calamity that would strike when Rachel finally got close enough to lay a proper eye on her. Thomas, it is my Christian duty to welcome the Cuthbert's new feminine heir to the island. Lord knows she'll soon be residing there on her own. And I need to make sure that she maintains the proper Avonlea perspective. Yes, Rachel, I understand. Yet I'm sure Miss Cuthbert can be trusted to... Thomas had a boy come to Green Gables. You know full well that I'd be sitting by your side and awaiting your judgment. However, these are women's issues, and until I'm allowed the vote alongside all of you, I shall exercise my right to feminine counsel. Rachel shouted, nearly turning blue from the lack of air. She caught her breath and continued, Now, Thomas, if you think you have the capacity to impart these long-kept wisdoms, then by all means... My no, dear. Please don't let me stop you. Thomas relented, looking forward to the quiet that would surely follow Rachel's exit. Not another word was spoken between the Lynns, and Rachel ran nearly in a full sprint up the hill, both ways, towards Green Gables. Marilla was happily doing the dishes and looking out upon the splendor that was their property, while Anne sat quietly and dutifully studying another prayer card. Things had calmed at Green Gables to a fine, softened pitch that all three of the residents had come to greatly enjoy. Marilla had known something felt different over the past two weeks and had figured it was the addition of Anne. However, as she sat in rapture, looking through the window pane, she saw the unmistakable visage of Rachel Lind coming up the drive. She shuddered as she realized that she had nearly completely forgotten about her bosom friend, Rachel. They hadn't so much as poured a cup of tea together since the day Matthew left for Bright River. It was the longest time they'd been apart in nearly 50 years, and Marilla chuckled a bit and quipped to herself, <laughs> Perhaps I should send for an orphan every month. What was that, Marilla? Anne asked inquisitively with a wide and lovely smile, stretching across her seemingly more beautiful face. Dear Lord, it's Rachel Lind, Marilla shouted. Anne's eyes bulged, not knowing who Rachel Lind was, but she'd never seen Marilla respond to anything with quite so much trepidation, even upon meeting Matilda Blewett. Anne's imagination ran amok all over her. Who is that? Anne shouted as if the house had caught fire. She is my dearest and oldest friend. Oh, that's wonderful. I can't wait to meet her. No, leave the room now and come back in on your best behavior. 
I don't want her knowing that you're a heathen, Marilla commanded. Anne's skull nearly leapt from her face as her newfound beauty and confidence left her in a moment. The last two weeks drained from her being, and she returned to the pathetic form that had entered Green Gables. As Rachel made her way up the hill, she began to falter like the old Sorrel mayor. It was then that Angus Iverson came around the corner with a bushel of cucumbers. He had been hired to work the fields for the remainder of the season. Angus attempted to run some sort of interference for the Cuthberts, knowing full well that this interaction wouldn't go well. Hey ho, Rachel, how you feeling? I heard you were ill. I also heard that women might be getting the vote this fall. <laughs> Angus said with a rosy smile as the two converged at the gate. Those are some fine looking new boots I noticed. Rachel said nothing as she swept past Angus, shoving him with the meanest clothesline anyone had ever seen since Captain Gamaliel Pringle ran off the Catholic Jesuit who had attempted to bring the Pope's tyranny to Charlottetown back in 1882. Yahoo! Marilla! Rachel crowed as the bushel of cucumbers rolled comedically down the drive. Angus laid pathetically on the ground and reached over and helped himself to a dusty cucumber. I think your well could use another freshening, you old sow, Angus said, not unkindly. Marilla finished a silent prayer to herself and opened the kitchen door. Hello, Rachel. I trust you're feeling yourself again these days. I would feel ages better if I knew you'd corrected this terrible mistake I've been hearing about. I've been hearing some surprising things about the latest turns at Green Gables. Rachel exposited, hardly stopping for breath, even though she looked thoroughly exhausted. That seems strange, seeing as these have all been private matters. Marilla said slyly as she closed the drapes on the parlor window and frowned as she watched Angus Iverson laying in the drive, helping himself to yet another delicious cucumber. But I've gotten over the shock of it myself. Couldn't you just send her back? Rachel leapt to the most logical and expected conclusion. Well, I tried as I might, but Matthew was so taken with her, and we hired Mr. Iverson for the summer, so we decided it would be best to keep her. On trial, here, at Green Gables, and see how things turned out. I don't know which sounds more insane, Marilla. Keeping an orphan girl or keeping that fool Angus Iverson on our, I mean, your property. Well, I agree with you, Rachel. But she is a fine little thing, and I've taken quite a liking to her. And Matthew is positively struck by her. It's a frightful responsibility you've taken upon yourself, Marilla. You've never raised anything more than a Jersey cow, and you're taking on an orphan? Rachel stammered, trying not to be too controversial. I don't mean to discourage you, of course. Oh, my, no, Rachel. I know you'd never do anything of the sort. Marilla crossed her fingers behind her back, knowing it was sinful to speak such an obvious lie. I'm not discouraged at all. Once I've set my mind to task on something, you know better than anyone that it stays made up. Oh, I don't know, Marilla, Rachel said with an evil smile. Perhaps John Blythe knows better than I do. Marilla nearly raised a hand to Rachel as she barked. Never mention that name in this house again. Sit down for tea, Rachel, and I'll go and fetch Anne. Anne had been waiting in the wings, listening and absorbing all the details and nuance of the conversation. Even though she knew little of the names and places of which they spoke, she made herself known with a curtsy and bow and introduced herself. Hello, Mrs. Lynde. Well, they certainly didn't choose you on account of your looks, Rachel said with a cruel tone. She's terribly homely and skinny, Marilla. Come here, child, and let me get a look at you. Anne was properly horrified, but stepped forward just the same. Lawful heart! Her hair is just as red as carrots! Come closer, child! Anne came to Mrs. Rachel, but not in the expected fashion. She flew across the kitchen with a tempestuous fury and had turned a dark shade of red by the time she got directly in the face of the outspoken Lind matriarch. I hate you! Anne shrieked, and everyone within earshot heard the outburst. Matthew ceased milking the cows, and Angus stopped chewing on his third cucumber. I hate you! I loathe you! I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ! Anne screamed and lifted a crucifix in the face of Mrs. Lynde. Ah! Screamed Rachel as she felt a deep guilt come over her. However, for Rachel, guilt caused a sense of outrage rather than contrition. How dare you call me skinny and ugly! How could you call me a freckled redhead? 
You're a mean, unfeeling woman, and I hate you! Anne shrieked at the top of her lungs, and even the people passing at the crossroads heard her wailing. Anne Shirley! Marilla shouted in consternation. Why, Marilla Cuthbert, I knew that things had gotten rotten around here when you decided to allow this demon child to stay here at Green Gables. But now I see the depth of corruption you've allowed to take root here in our lands. Rachel cried as tears began to stream down her face. Anne stormed out the door and slammed it behind her. Rachel got up from her place without so much as touching her tea, and Marilla said, I don't mean to make excuses for her, Rachel, but you were too hard on her. Rachel responded with a trembling voice. I see I should be very careful what I say should I ever decide to step foot in this home again, Marilla. Rachel pounded her feet out the door, perhaps never to return. Good evening, Rachel. Well, I wasn't in this chapter, at least not any speaking lines. But I was here in spirit, if you count that nasty one I laid down right before I walked outside. On behalf of everyone here at Capo and the Rev, this is Matthew Cuthbert saying, we'll see you next time.